C64 player guide and review. This time we'll be checking out Winter Games, developed by Action Games Incorporated and published by Epics in 1985. The game begins with a very memorable introduction sequence, borrowed of course from Summer Games, and the coders of Summer Games and the Winter Games are definitely separate. From the title menu, we can select a lot of options, including Play One Event and Play All Events. So. To begin with, I'm just going to select to practice the hot dog. The first event, the hot dog, we can perform loads of different manoeuvres, and the more complicated those manoeuvres are, the better the score we'll get from the judges at the end. And this was scored during the Lemon C64 competition, which I recorded on the 24th of January 2016. So this was a live warm-up attempt from that competition, and all the footage you can see in this guide will be from that very event. You can see by performing a loop-de-loop, -loop, I managed to almost get a 10 there, and if you can get 10 almost three times, then you get a massive score in this game. Let's try again and by moving our joystick in a circle and landing that thing by pulling down, hopefully we can get a good score. It's very easy to mess this event up and it's very infuriating to do that, but with practice you can achieve something that averages something good in this game and because this is just a solo play, I'm averaging my own scores against myself. But don't forget this is for the Lemon Z64 competition. And so that's the hot dog, and we're getting slightly better at this, but not phenomenal, as you can see. I'm just trying out different things just to see what happens, and some of those will lead to an instant death if you keep doing those for too long. And so this game can be fun, and it can be comedy if you're playing this with multiple players. Fault at the end of that event, unfortunately playing against myself. That didn't work, so let's try the biathlon event, which is one of my favourite events in the game. By moving the joystick left and right, in terms of the legs, we can climb and we can manoeuvre our way along the track with our skis. And you can see the speed that we're moving in the bottom left corner, and our heartbeat is in the bottom right. You really don't want the pulse to go very far, over 120, if you can help it, or you'll have a heart attack. And of course the time is in the bottom as well, you'll definitely have to race against time on this event. This one being the biathlon, you have to ski to somewhere and then you have to shoot something and then you have to ski to the next one and I think you have to do that three or four times at the end you get a line and crossing over that line will give us a time and the objective of course pull down on the down slopes to gain a bit more speed and hopefully carry that and climb up these other sides pretty quickly and it's great to march up and down very quickly in the game and very phenomenal to get that perfect pace and we'll have to pull forward and pull back on this controller to cock our gun and then press fire of course of the target 
This is a live competition run, so I'm trying my best to try and get further in this game and try and get a good high score for the end of it. If you lose the momentum, unfortunately you lose the rhythm and that loses time and that's definitely something that we can do without on this particular run. You can see the graphics are great and it reminds us of the other game series even though this wasn't coded by the same guys who did Summer Games or California Games. If we can get a perfect score then that's perfect for us but it's very tricky and it's so easy to mess that up at the last minute. Well, let's not waste any more time aiming for that one. Let's just run straight for that line and see what time that we got at the end of that biathlon. And it's a struggle and it's an Ironman race. And come on, let's not lose power now. Let's move those arms and let's use your real power of the controller to move this player. Finally move across one of the last rivers in the game and we get to hopefully the last shooting section. By this time I'm worn out so let's try to get as many of these as possible. Hopefully let's run 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 up the next mountain whilst we have that speed and no, I'm actually very worn out at the moment so you can see me struggling to get to that finish line at the end of all that our total time was two minutes 54 and i've managed to do that a lot quicker than that and so did most of the contestants playing this at 11 64 competition so that's the end of that and two misses means a 10 second penalty so that's the end of that, let's just get on to the next event and check out our next event. Well, we beat our old record of 3 minutes 6, well done, we got the gold medal. And it's great in this particular version, it saves our highest scores to the disc so we can beat ourselves any point. So let's move on to the speed skating and on this disc immediate loads up fairly quickly. Pressing that fire button we can begin and it's great that it begins with some music on some of the levels and in this case all we have to do is to beat the computer player. Again by timing our rhythm we can outperform the computer player which is on the top of the screen and it's not hard once you get the perfect rhythm to get to that maximum speed although maintaining that over this short distance isn't too bad, it could be a lot better if the speed was maxed in some way. You can see I'm not making too bad at a job of it. If you can maintain a rhythm, then you can be like Saturday Night Fever and champion yourself on the ice rink but again gold in this case isn't very hard in this game there are no difficult settings it's all against the computer and there are no speed settings either even though this is an ncsc game it runs at exactly the same speed and is speed locked so even if you play this on a faster american machine it will still play at this rate let's move on to that figure skating and figure skating is one of those I never quite understood now or even back in the day and if you had the manual I guess you had the directions for this and if you didn't you had to make them up and as long as we don't fall down fall on the floor hopefully that won't be a huge penalty and as long as we do the various things in the game by pushing the joystick into those corners then hopefully without falling down we can do something that we well, we can kneel on the spot and pray, I guess, but we can do something hopefully that the judges will like and award us for at the end of this round. Back 
performing double stunts, m moving backwards like that. We can press fire to alter our direction at any point, and that moves us forwards or backwards. And the backwards stunts are obviously worth a bit more. And obviously you can fall on your bottom as well. And that doesn't make life particularly easy in front of all these judges. That wasn't particularly a perfect performance for me, and that's perhaps the best I could do. That's a score of 1.6 on that particular event. Let's move on to hopefully the next one, the ski jump, for a bit more excitement as we launch ourselves at high speed across a breathtaking breakneck jump. deep breath on our attempts, it's time to press that fire button and once we're in the air we can then change our manoeuvres and in the top corner we can see the ski position and we'll have to align our skier and the skis up correctly in order to land on the other side. If we lean forwards, that will gain us some more momentum and some more distance as well, and the more distance the better on this particular event, because that gives us the more score. We can go for a nice easy landing, but that means that we'll have to straighten our legs just before the landing, and that means pulling down at just the right time in order to do that. I completely messed that up, it looks like, on this particular room, so hopefully I will have a few more tries at that and try to get better at it. a meager run but at least that's a game score and it's better than wiping out because it is possible to get a triple negative when you're trying to get through these events. So Winter Games is one of those that I did play back in the day and I played this more than Summer Games, I didn't have Summer Games too, I played California Games quite a bit and World Games, although playing World Games now has kind of worn off quite a bit mainly because of the log rolling and ridiculous events like the tossing the caber, but the cliff diving wasn't too bad, at least this one has some variety on offer and that includes the freestyle skating as well. Which is exactly the same as the figure skating that we saw earlier on. So whilst you're watching that, I'll just mention that Action Graphics was the US game development studio and that was incorporated and launched on 18th of September 1981 according to the article on Moby Games and it was closed during the production of Winter Games in 1985. The studio was headed by Bob Ogden and he was the software manager for Nutting Associates which was a separate company spun off from Bally Midway to develop games for the Bally Astrocade platform. And anybody who's seen my Amiga Quantum Leap documentary will instantly know that Nutting Associates were also incorporated with Nolan Bushnell in his attempts to dominate the arcade market. And so Bally came back with the Bally Astrocade for the home market. And unfortunately, it all collapsed during Winter Games. And the developers of this game was coded by Richard Ditton and Elaine Hodgson. And they later went on to create their own company, Incredible Technologies, which went on to own the Winter Games license, and they went on to other games in the future, and so this production company was a mixture of guys, and 
the graphics were Timothy Skelly and the music was David Thiel and Tim and David also went on to the production company of the Three Stooges in 1987 which was released through a Cinemaware label. Back on the C64 we're getting through the skating and skating in this case can be very boring, particularly when you get all meagre scores and is perhaps the worst event of the lot. And it's good to see the perhaps rotoscope figure of a woman dancing around, but that's basically about it. The music is boring, so that's my worst event. And generally many players agree. So let's go on to the bob sled and let's hope we have a few runs at this. To try to get down it, a high speed run at last down the side of a mountain. In this one, it's a race against time, and I'm not quite sure if you can push forward to accelerate because the natural drop of the mountain will also accelerate us. You can see the speed that we're traveling, uh, the bar just below our bobsled, bobsleigh, and you can also see the time that it's taken us so far. Virtual 2.5D graphics are an offer, and there is a sense of speed as well, because it does take some reactions to get over what was the final corner on this particular run, which means wipe out. It's so easy to do. This is one of the easiest events, if not the easiest event on the entire game, and I made that look hard, but I guess if you pull back to slow down, that makes this a doddle, and if you preempt all these corners by turning just in time, it's an easy glide all the way down to the finish. Hooray! That's another beaten track, so let's move on to those scores. The 64 magazine gave this game 80%, Commodore User gave it 80%, Commodore Format gave this game 87%, the current 1164 score is 87%, and Zap originally gave this 94%. Back in its day, well, this was 1985, there was nothing like it on the scene, and this was ported and coded to all of the machines, including the Atari platforms, of course, the Amiga and the ST, by the same team, Richard Ditton and Elaine Hodgson. So, let's check out our world records. That's particularly lame on most events, but I'm happy with a couple of them. So, thank you very much for viewing this play guide and review.